you, mate. Uh, yes, thank you for joining us tonight. Really do appreciate you taking your time out. No problem, mate. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no worries. So, yes, tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen, going to be joined with uh, Ollie Smith, who is a uh, Forest Green fan, uh, also runs a Forest Green podcast as well in his spare time. Um, so, yeah, um, it, it's, just, it's a bit of a strange one tonight, Ollie, because, you know, usually when, when I get guests on, I usually talk about, obviously, how we've been doing as well, but we haven't played for, like, nearly a month now. So we're uh, going to go straight to you, basically. So, yeah, um, obviously, you've been doing really well. Um, this season, um, how has it been from uh, Forest Green's point of view? Yeah, as you say, Forest Green have been doing really well this season, and um, you know, it surprised me a little bit just how consistent we've been. Really, last season we started the season really well, and then sort of December January time dropped off massively, and actually finished finished tenth in the end. But you know, this season we've been very consistent. And well, we're joint joint on points at the top at the moment with Cambridge, and you know it's been really enjoyable as a fan. Obviously, it's been completely different watching the games on on my laptop rather than being at the new lawn. But yeah, you know it's it's been um it's it's still been good. You know, we managed to go to a few games early on in the season, but you know the team's really impressed me. I think we've got a brilliant balanced team, and. We've just been playing really well and, and getting the results. You know, long may it continue, really. Yeah, nice one. Uh, so, what would um, what do you think's the um, reason why you've been doing well this season? Do you think it's the signings that you made at the start of the season, or just a continuous progression from like last season? Um, the recruitment was, was was incredible in the summer. Really, you know, since Mark Cooper joined the club, he's made over a hundred uh, signings for the for the team, which is a you know, extortionate amount. Mm -hmm. And I, I think in the summer has been his best example of recruitment so far. The players he, he brought in were, um, you know, they're of, the, of the, the right balance. They've got that experience in League Two and the EFL. Yeah. But, you know, they're not, they're not like 35 years old. Yeah. So, for example, Jamil Matz, he's 31 years old, proven goal scorer at this level. Oh, yeah. Got that experience. And he's, you know, he's just been incredible for the team so far. We signed more, more Jordan Moore Taylor as well, who's um had like playoff experience with MK Dons and Exeter. Mm. He's been a great addition. And um Luke McGee, a keeper as well, who I think he um came through at uh, Tottenham Academy, he's been at Portsmouth and I think he was at Lone and Bradford as well. And you know, we've we've struggled with keepers in the past and he's played pretty much every single game apart from recently. So the additions that we we um brought in have been like, instrumental in our success so far this season, and they brought experience that we didn't have last year. We had um you know a lot of youth youth players last season, and I think that's probably why we crumbled a little bit. So the added ex added experience that has been brought in with the transfers this summer has has you know has really helped us to to be where we are in the table right now. Yeah, I mean, obviously, from the outside looking in, I see obviously in the league table you're flying at the minute. You know, probably the one of the informed teams in the in the league so far. Um, of course, you got a really good result against Carlisle. So, uh, how, how would you describe that game? Um, against Carlisle, it was a a great performance. You know, we we had a few dodgy results. Um, Exeter, Crawley, Tranmere. You know, they, they weren't as good performances as we've seen throughout the season. Yeah. And then to come up against Carlisle, especially at their place, which is, you know, a notoriously hard place to go yeah. um, and come away with a, I wouldn't say a comfortable win, but a, a convincing result, yeah. you know, it's just it was really good to see. And I know Carlisle hadn't played many games due to postponements, but mm -hmm. they were, they were still one of the informed teams and they were still, you know, a very dangerous team to come up against. Yeah. So it was really good to, to get that result. And what impressed me the most was the reaction from yeah. them conceding the goal because we scored pretty much straight away and we could have had a, a couple more as well. So, mm. you know, the fact that we didn't lie down and we weren't daunted by, by Carlisle, who were a very, very good team, you know, it was really impressive. So I think that victory is probably one of the more important uh, results we've had so far this season, just in terms of performances and what it means in the table as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, when you know when you face against a side that's you know 
close to where you are is obviously it's a it's a massive um, massive thing to go to their place. I mean they've been flying this season. I mean we find that art when we played them, it's a tough place like you say to go to and. And it's it kind of sets up for this weekend against us. I mean, depending if the game's on or not. I mean, we haven't again we haven't played for a while. Um, if obviously hopefully the game will go ahead this weekend. Uh, I mean, from our point of view, similar to Carlisle, we haven't played in a few weeks, so that could that could probably you know work to your advantage. You know, we match fitness and that, so that could be a, a big thing there as well ahead of this weekend. Yeah, it should be an interesting game. It's it's you know it's very strange the. When we played you guys this season, because the the last game was, I think your first win of, of the season, and Nigel Clough one of his first games in charge. Yep. And obviously this time around, you haven't played for quite a while, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty sure before, you, well, when you were playing, you had like four or, or three, three or four wins on the bounce. So, you know, it's a bit it's diff, difficult circumstances each time. But yeah. I'm interested to see to see what you guys are about really, because I think. Forest Green were a bit un- unfortunate in the in the last game simply because of that new manager bounce with um with Clough coming in and yeah. then I'm I, I'm I'm not you know I don't know too much but I'm pretty sure after that there were a few dodgy results but now it seems you guys are really hitting you know top gear and uh, I'm pretty sure top of the form table maybe so it's, you know it's going to be a really really difficult game. Yeah, I mean. Um... Obviously, you know, when we when we played against you earlier this season, um, of course, we obviously got the result on the, on the day. And I can remember it because it was lashing it down as well. So it was one of them games, it, it, you know, one of them games that can go either way, to be fair. But yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, five wins in a row. Uh, we've been banging form. But the only thing is, with all these postponements, it can sometimes hinder your teams, I suppose. And I think that's the only worry going into this weekend. Because obviously, you you know, you, you're coming off a good result against Carlisle. You know, when us not really playing, you know, it's it's going to make for an interesting game for both sides. To be fair, um, at the weekend. Yeah, have your um, is it has that been because of COVID or like frozen pitches or? Uh, just just frozen pitches and um, what you know, waterlogged, and it's just been terrible weather up here. I mean, you know, yeah. the forecast, and it's one of them. It's hard to predict the weather. Obviously, it's like until the day itself, and you know, you, obviously, you, have, you can prepare for it as much as what you want. I mean. We we're meant to be playing Bolton the other night. Um, second time that's up to be postponed. The first time was a frozen pitch, and the second time they're absolutely lashing it down. So, you know, yeah. it's frustrating. But end of the day, it, it obviously if it's not playable, you know, it is what it is. Um, so it's odd enough anyway, not being able to go and watch your teams up in person. And obviously, you look forward to watching it at home and stuff. And for it to be called, called off constantly, like you know, we're like we're the ones turning into Carlisle essentially with all the postponements that were up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, hopefully the game goes ahead because it should be a you know an interest inter- interesting game, and um, I saw is it George Lapsley? You signed him permanently. Yeah, now. that's yeah. Yeah, he he really impressed me when um we played against you guys. So that's quite a big deal, I think. Really, a great player. Yeah, amazing signing. To be fair, um, like like I don't really know what else I can say about him. He's just been been great since it's come on uh, on loan and obviously we signed him up permanently and um yeah he's just an exciting player to be fair um but yeah so you know going into the game this weekend have you got any injury news any uh, any injury players um well against Carlisle Jamil Matz who's our top goal scorer this season he didn't actually play I'm not too sure what the injury is but it's going to be interesting to see whether he he um he plays or not, and then I mentioned him earlier, Luke McGee, our keeper, who's played the majority of this season. The last couple of games, he's been injured actually, and we've had Lewis Thomas play instead. So unless he returns back to fitness, it will be Lewis Thomas in goal instead. And against um Carlisle, we went with a new a new player, Josh Davison, on loan from um Charlton. I'm I'm pretty sure striker who played instead of Jamil Matt, and he he did a you know a very good job. Mm-hmm. But you know, Matt has been one of our best players this season, so it's quite a big miss. But we just have to wait and see um, until Mark Cooper's interview comes out for a bit more clarity on on that, really. But yeah, apart from uh, McGee and Jamil Matt, I'm pretty sure most of our team is is fit. Mm. Yeah, I mean, on paper, you're looking at some of the players that you've got there, and I can see why you're up there. To be fair, the players that you've got really, so you know, you've got to be aware of your attacking players. I mean. I mean, who knows? Jamil Mark could be fit uh, for the weekend. You know, it could. He might just be a minor thing, and you know, he's a big threat in it himself. I mean, we've come up against him a few times uh, when he was playing for Newport. He's always been a nuisance for us. So, you yeah. know, you know, he's. Um, we know all about him. So, 
yeah, it's it's one of them. I mean, obviously, you know, we're starting to look like a team since clubs come in. Um, still a long way off from where we want to be. Um, but then again, I think a lot of teams can say the same, to be fair. Um, but yeah, it's just from our point of view, we're just trying to make sure we're safe and that, if anything, and just take it game by game, if anything, really. I mean, at the start of the season, uh, we had Graham Coughlin as manager and... I mean, to be fair to him, he did sign some decent players, but for whatever reason, he couldn't get us playing. And, you know, if we had still had him in charge, you know, you'd, you'd easily win because he just didn't really know how to set us up or, you know, get us playing in any way. And since Nigel's come in, virtually with the same players, uh, bar the couple of signings he's made, you know, um, he's made us look like a, a team, really. So, um, yeah. It's, what, it's, what sort of um, what sort of style do you think you play then with, with when Nigel Clough's come in? Like, what, what sort of style is he? Implemented. Um, I know it's a bit cliche, but just more attacking. Whereas with mm. um, with Graham, it was just all negative. Really, it was just like sideways, backwards. Just you know, just like you know, playing it safe type thing. Right, you know, just rather than go all out the attacking and stuff. And you know, yeah. it's a bit of a strange one. Why we had such a poor start? I mean, I don't think they were bad players. I just think again, for whatever reason, you know, um, he just couldn't get on playing in the way he wanted to. Obviously, it worked for him at Bristol, and he's obviously tried something here. It's not worked, and Obviously, I made the change and, you know, since Nigel's come in, it's massively improved us. But, you know, we're still a long way off from where we want to be. Um, but if, if I'm honest with you, I mean, for me, just just being staying in the league for me and just if we finish just in and around the playoffs and that for me will be a successful season considering mm. the bad start we've had, if I'm honest with you. Yeah. Do you think the owners would be happy with that as well? Because I'm pretty sure they, you know, they like to see results from all their investment and, and stuff at Mansfield. And you've had quite a few different managers over the year. So yeah, yeah, absolutely, think- yeah, uh, yeah. With Steve Evans, Dave Flickcroft, um, you know, some some experienced managers for this level, and obviously we've missed out in the past um, due to just other managers just leaving or just you know for whatever reason it's just not worked out. So. You know, Clough's the kind of manager that I think is a good appointment just purely because he's a manager that likes to, you know, stay somewhere, like a, a long-term project, you know. Yeah. Whereas someone like Steve Evans, he's not the kind of manager that, yeah, he's got a load of promotions on his CV, but it, it, he's not really a long-term plan, in my opinion. Um, no. You know, and Dave Flickcroft was a props unlucky to get sacked, to be fair, just missed out, um, didn't get the chance to do it again. And then obviously we went for John Dempster and then Graham and then we've, we've just gone back to having a manager that, you know, has been around. So, yeah, um, obviously they're a bit disappointed if we don't do anything this season. But I think at the same time, I think, they you know, it's a, a big job for us to, you know, rebuild yeah. and, you know, it's just, Project. yeah, just a t- it just takes time. I mean, um, similar to you guys in a way, um, in a way, obviously, you know, you've come close to the past couple of seasons and now, you know, well, from the outside, it looks as though you've just improved on what you've done last season, made a couple of signings and, well, you know, I think we're trying to do the similar thing. Yeah, like you said, with uh, with uh, a Cough, Coughlin and Clough, they sort of change in style. I'd say one of the reasons why we're doing so well this, this year is we've changed our, our style a little bit. Yeah. Like last year, we used to dominate possession just for the sake of it really not really create too much whereas mm. this is we still dominate the ball a lot but mm. we we like to go a bit more direct and you know Jamil Matt's been a big part of that but Nicky Cadden another player we, we brought in in the, in the summer mm. didn't really know much about him before he came from Scotland but he mm. sort of plays left, mid left back you know he I think he um ranks near the top for like crosses and chances created so mm. you know we've been a lot more direct this season and it's, it's paid off quite substantially I'd say really yeah but um something I wanted to ask you about is is Farron Rawson because mm. he was he's been he was brilliant when he was at Forest Green and I was really surprised to see him go in the summer uh, mm. being released but I remember when um we played you guys in the in the, the home fixture at Forest Green yeah. For the podcast I do, I spoke to a Mansfield fan and he said that um, Rawson hasn't been doing really well at Mansfield. Is that still the case or has he improved a bit? He started off a bit slow. Like he was, well, I suppose a lot of the players were since the start of the season, to be fair, not not sparring. But yeah, he wasn't, he didn't start off the greatest. It's since Nigel's come in, he's been one of the standout players. Um, well, one yeah. of many standout players, should I say. Um, yeah, he's. Yeah, he's one of them. Um, he's been quite solid for us recently. Um, it took him a while to get going, if I'm honest, because um, a lot of lot of people, including myself, was a bit unsure. 
Uh, I mean, obviously, we heard good things about him at Forest Green, you know, and I, I saw the reaction when we signed him because obviously a lot of Forest Green fans was just shocked, like like you say, and yeah. I was like, well, we've got some good, we've got a good player here, and if they're shocked to see him go, um, but yeah, he, he started to show what he's about. Um, he's got a good partnership with Ryan Serena going at the minute. Uh, Touchwood, no interest to that, um, so they've been quite a solid back there. Um, so yeah, um, I think one of the big factors in moving to Mansfield was he's from Nottingham. So I think that was a big factor as well. Like him just coming home essentially uh, to be closer yeah. to his family. I think that played a big part in it as well. Yeah, and uh, is did you say um is it Ryan Sweeney at yeah. the back? Yeah, I think he's the the twin brother of um Dan Sweeney, one of yeah. our players, yeah. which yeah, is yeah. pretty cool. You know, I don't think um many brothers face off against each other too often. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, uh, like, what do you guys? Who would you? Who would you say is your like main main threat then going into the game on Saturday? Uh, main threat. Uh, I'd say uh, Jordan Bowery up front. He's um, he's to be honest with you, I didn't expect him to score as many as what he has done. I'd say he's a yeah. big physical presence up front. Um, Jamie Reid, another striker, non-league, is very. Very pasty, chases down players, uh, nightmare for defenders. Um, George Lapsley, he's probably the one to look out for in midfield. Um, so, yeah, I'd say probably Jordan Barry um, and George Lapsley for me, two of the main threats. I mean, not to say we haven't got any other threats, but they're the ones that really get the team clicking. What happened to um to Nicky Maynard? Because obviously, a couple of, well, last year and a couple of years ago, he was, he was really good at, at this level, but I think he's gone to... Newport, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, on loan, yeah. Um, I mean, for last season, it was great, you know, got double figures, it was, it was great. And this season, he's, he's had a few injuries, uh, but when he has played, he hasn't really shown the same kind of form. Um, and Nigel pretty much said um, in his press conference that he, he just didn't really, he wanted to get played. And a bit like Andy Cook, there wasn't in the plans, essentially, and obviously he wanted mm. to play. So I don't blame him for that, if I'm honest with you. Um, just wants no. to play football. Obviously, he's getting to that age now where, you know, he's probably got, what, a couple of years left in him. Um, and yeah. a lot of people I've spoke to, like other fans have said the same. And it's like, well, you know, he was great in the past, but I think it's just one of them. He's got, what, a year or two in him, depending on fitness. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Um, what about your main threats then? I know you spoke about Jamil Matt, you know, depending on injuries and that. Who else would you say is the biggest threat from your side? Um, I'd say Aaron Collins is, um, you know, he's really stepped up a, a game or two this season. I still think he can, go, you know, improve a bit more, but he's been really, really good for us this season. Mm -hmm. Sort of playing in a sort of centre forward cam cam role alongside another striker, whether that be Jamil Matz, Davison, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, he, he just there was a big change in him in the early early, early days of this season. You know, his work rate went up amazingly yeah. he was having loads loads of shots loads of like to taking people on quite quite a bit mm -hmm. and i think he's got six goals four assists for us um so far this season he scored a penalty against um carlisle and he's he's been really good but i think he's i think at one point he had like one of the worst um conversion rates for, for his shots up in the whole league and mm -hmm. that's simply because he gets in these great positions but you know, his, his decision-making in the final third and his, his finishing is, isn't the best. Mm. So if he can, you know, improve on that, it would be a really dangerous player and one that's capable of playing, you know, a league or two higher up. But I think he'll be a handful for um, Mansfield's back line on Saturday. And yeah, he's just he's been really good for us so far this season, I'd say, Aaron Collins. Yeah, I mean, I look at you, some of the players you've got are like, and they're really physical. I mean, but then again, they've always, I've, I've always looked at your team and they've always been physical players, to be fair. So, like, we've got to be wary for that. Um, it's always been a physical yeah. contest when, whenever, you know, each side have played against each other over the years, you know, even back in the conference years. So, you know, they've always been good battles, to be fair, against both sides. Yeah, it was um, it was a crazy game last season. The 4-3 was, was mental. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully, Saturday's games, you know, it, just the same for entertainment because that was that was crazy last year mental yeah. game yeah it, uh, it really was um so yeah you mentioned that you've got a podcast then so um how long have you been doing that for um about a year and two or three months now mm. and uh 
Yes, I, me and my um, my my, my mate, but my uh, my co-host, we just we we've, we've been thinking about it for a while. Mm. So I mean, thought we just start it, and you know, the first few episodes weren't the best, but we've really kicked on, mm. and pe- people seem to to like it. We we don't do it too often, you know, every couple of weeks talking mm. about a few games, uh, speaking to like opposition fans and and stuff, and yeah, I really enjoy it. We've been lucky enough to speak to a few former players as well. Mm. And it's just, you know, really good. Like with Forest Green, because we're such a small, a small club, really, in the middle of nowhere, there wasn't too much sort of similar, uh, like, co- content before. Mm. And um, there was a bit of a gap in the market. And yeah, I, I think it's just been really good. I think it surprised me and Laurie how how well it's been received. Yeah. But you know, it's something we we enjoy really. We we don't do it for for like numbers. We just do it because we enjoy it, and it's it's been good so far. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah, it's great. I, I like how you know fans can do this. Just talk about you know just obviously different sides of the fence because obviously how else would you know other than just talking to a fan? I mean, you know, so yeah, yeah, same, uh, same for myself really. I mean, I saw um I saw you on your YouTube. You spoke to an ex player, um, one of the keepers, I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. How was, was how was that? Was that good? Yeah, it's I'm I'm the same. I've I've um I've been doing like blogs for the past couple of years, and I thought like just trying something different because um, I was yeah. on a podcast. Then I decided to do like my own thing, and I thought I quite enjoyed doing this. And I like I didn't really expect it to like you know take off like send it to yourself really. And um, it's just something to do as well, really. You know, just obviously yeah. talking about your team and stuff. And I just love it. You know, just in his spare time, you know, just getting other fans involved. And yeah, it's it's it was a bit strange at first because I just didn't think, well, if people would be interested or not, but like, yeah. realise people are and just having different opinions. I just, yeah, I love it. It's just great. Yeah, it's, it's good, really. Um, I was something I was wanting to ask you as well is, other than Lapsley, did you did you make any other like moves in the transfer January transfer market or? Uh, or yeah, there was rumours. No, it's only rumours. This is like, um, there's nothing in it, but there was rumours saying that we was trying to get um, Lucas Aikens from Burton Albion, but apparently yeah. Burton couldn't, uh, they tried to get somebody from Exeter, I believe, um, somebody Bowman, I think his name was. And they Ryan couldn't... Bowman. Yeah. yeah, and apparently the deal fell through, um, so we ended up getting uh, uh, somebody from Blackpool on loan, I can't remember his name now, but we... so that was a last minute kind of deal because we needed another striker, so it's yeah. hard to say what like if they've got any good players obviously they haven't played as we haven't played so um, and we've got a keeper from Wolves so we've got three keepers now which I was a bit surprised at because obviously two keepers usually say fans but um, yeah end of the day I trust Nigel we've been doing well at the minute so I'm like you know it's a lot more than me so I'm just like anyone that comes to the club you know obviously you hope they do well but um yeah, so just a striker and a, a, a keeper from our point of view. Uh, a couple of players going out on loan. Um, I believe the National League window is still open for loans, and I think we're going to be loaning some more younger players out. Um, so, um, but no, other than that, um, I think we've kind of yeah. got the players that we need. To be fair, uh, what about you guys? Yeah, we were. Um, we weren't. Well, as a fan's perspective, I didn't want the window to be, you know, too busy because last season we signed quite a few loan players yeah. and it just sort of dismantled the team and dismantled the flow. Like yeah. we signed um, Conrad, Lo- Conrad Logan from you guys. Yeah. And he just didn't, he didn't do very well at all. And we signed, we signed a few other players on loan as well. So this, this season I just wanted Cooper to make minimal changes, but yeah. unfortunately we were sort of forced into a bit of business because um, Carl Winchester, who's been one of our best players the last few years, he yeah. um, signed, Sunderland, which is a, a great move for him, mm-hmm. and Liam Kitchen is you know one of the best defenders we've had in recent years, and he's only like 20, 21 years old. Mm-hmm. He was sold for about six hundred grand to um to Barnsley. Nice. So we brought in um Bailey Cargill from MK Dons mm-hmm. uh, to reinforce the back line, and then um Isaac Hutchinson from from Southend to replace Winchester. Mm-hmm. So we've been we've been a, a bit busy, and then also. With Davison coming in on on loan, we loaned out two strikers as well, Matty Stevens and Josh March, who, you know, are really talented players. But unfortunately, they just haven't had enough minutes this season, really. So they, they needed to go out and, and get some playing time. But you know, we we still didn't make any transfers for the sake of it, which I'm really happy about. 
Yeah. And it seems that the, the new players have settled in quite well, which is good because last season, all the, all the changes, chopping and changing, was, was it just ruined everything, really. Yeah, we, we had a similar thing a couple of seasons ago where under David Flickcroft, you know, we were doing really well. Um, probably the best chance we've had in years to go up in the Football League. And um, yeah, we ended up, um, you know, signing George Grant. Now, don't get me wrong, he's a great player and all, but like, the, the problem is sometimes when you're doing well, you don't want to kind of change anything and it can sometimes yeah. just disrupt things. And that, that was my only concern in, with the transfer window. I mean, obviously, obviously we're, we're not going to know in, until, obviously, you know, they get played and stuff like that. But, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like last season, I think we played about three or four um, goalkeepers. And um, when Logan came in, mm. it was strange because we had Lewis Thomas, who's played the last few games. He, he was brilliant last season, made quite a few clean sheets. Mm -hmm. And it didn't seem, you know, it didn't seem necessary having mm -hmm. Logan come in. And he wasn't necessarily like an awful keeper. He just didn't play well and he conceded quite a few goals. And then we, we signed a few other players on loan as well. And it just, there was no consistency with the team. Whereas this season, we've had spells of, you know, no changes for quite a few weeks in a row. So mm -hmm. I think I think that's why we're doing so well, really. Just the... Uh, the consistency really yeah i think that's it i mean you know from the outside looking in like but it, it, it looks as they obviously you've made some signings in the summer um as well as in the transfer window you've gone shipped a couple out and brought some in and yeah you like yeah. i say you just see i can see the improvement i mean obviously the league, league table says it all but yeah i mean you've always been a good football inside from obviously when i've you know seen um seen you guys play to be fair um so mm -hmm. it just makes for an interesting game sat they touch wood the weather's all right um because Again, it's. I think both sides will want it on. You know, I think any the last thing anyone wants is postponements because it's just it's odd enough not being there in person. But like you know, it, it just we just want it on. <laughs> yeah, and like you say, it's a shame fans can't go because I've been to um Field Mill. I think it's, it's called, isn't it? I've yeah. been um yeah. I've been t two or three times now. Mm -hmm. I think last season was obviously a great game, and. I think Mansfield were our first away game in the Football League when we got promoted. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and the fans are always quite good. They're always quite loud. And we take, not not many, but we take a decent amount. So it's always been, you know, a good atmosphere mm -hmm. and, and good games, really. So it's just a shame fans can't go. But, you know, mm -hmm. I'll be watching on, on my laptop. And hopefully, if we start quickly, Forest Green should, should get a result. But Mansfield are sort of in good form but then you you say you haven't played for quite a few few yeah. weeks now so you know yeah. it all goes out it all goes out the window on on saturday anyway so yeah but hopefully i think forest green on paper should should be beating mansfield would, would you agree or, or not uh yeah i mean i wouldn't say no to be fair um yeah absolutely i mean to be honest it's hard to disagree on that just because of, like the players you've got where you are in the league um but again, League Two is so unpredictable. I mean, I mean, I, I wouldn't say. I mean, from our point of view, I'd like to say obviously a six win in a row, but obviously a tough game because obviously facing against the side and yourselves that just come off a good result yeah. against Carlisle, or you know, you match fit. And I mean, obviously we haven't played for like three weeks, and you think, well, we're, you know, we're refreshing that. But again, it's that much sharpness, and I think that could be an advantage to you guys. If I'm being honest with you, that's my only concern from our point of view. So yeah, I mean. It's it's an odd one to call from honest with you. I mean, I'd, I mean, we are capable of getting a result, but I, I don't know. I just I could just see it being a draw. From being honest with you, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking at some of your results now, like four 0 against Port Vale, beating Salford, beating Alder, mm -hmm. and you know these good teams in the league. So mm -hmm. I'm a bit concerned, but I I think Forest Green, you know, they they, are, they probably are the favourites, but then. Mansfield are a very good team, especially since um Clough's come in. And then you did you guys did beat us earlier on in the season. So it's 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 a hard one to call, really. Yeah, it is. I mean, League Two, well, like we say, League Two is so unpredictable. I mean, you know, you look at teams up there and you know, it's just a crazy league to predict. I mean, you know, you you wouldn't even know where to begin half the time. So it's hard to it's hard to call, to be fair. Um but like I always say, I mean, I'm one of them, like, you know, if you've done enough to win the game, then, you know, credit to you, you know, because that, that's just the way, you know, football should be, essentially, you know, who just made the best team win, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
But um, who do you think will 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 go up then this season from the league? Uh, I can see you guys going up. Uh, Carlisle and um, oh, it's a tough one. I think you you and Carlisle definitely will go up. The third one, I think, it's a, it's an interesting one. Um, I don't know. I fancy Newport too. I think they'll sneak back in there. Yeah, I'd I I'd, I'd agree. Yeah, but saying that, who knows? It's League Two. I mean, at the minute, I think more comes up there at the minute. Um, yeah, so... more have su- surprised me. They've just come out of nowhere, really. And yeah, then it's like four points off the top. It's crazy. Yeah, good, good, good manager for this level, Derek Adams. I mean, whatever he's done down there, it's true. I mean, credit to him, really. I mean, one of the lowest mm. budgets in the league. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and um, if you look at like Exeter and stuff, they're they're in eighth position right now, and I at the start of the season I thought they they would be nailed on really to, to go up. So yeah, it's just it's just the it's just a good league to be in. You know, nobody's really run away with it as we've seen in, in previous years. So mm. hopefully, hopefully, if Forest Green can you know keep keep grinding out the results, then we'll be up 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 amongst it come come May. Yeah, I think you'll be. I think you'll get automatics. I mean, the only obviously the way you'd come out is obviously if you have a few, you know a few bad results. But I, I still think you'll do it. To be fair, I think it's yours to lose. If I'm honest, I know we've still got a lot of games to be played. But you know, you've got the players, you've got the manager that you know. So I don't yeah. see why why not personally. I mean, we've got obviously like three. I think it's three four games games in hand. So that's what I mean. It's like you win a couple of games and that's it. You're up there. I mean, what well, I mean. Yeah. It was, we was like looking down on us, you know, to make sure that we wasn't, you know, going to be in the bottom two. And now we're not far from the playoffs. So, you know, if teams above us drop mm. points and we pick up, then, you know, we could be in the playoffs, you know. So, yeah. you know, if, if, if you don't make the playoffs this season, I think next season, definitely, because, you know, if you keep, if you keep Clough and some of your, your better players, mm. then with the back in from the Radfords, you know, I think you'll be up there next season as well because. Mansfield, you know, they've had a, they've just been inconsistent from yeah. from me from yeah. my point of view. They yeah. have they always have good players. It just doesn't always always click. Yeah, I think you're bang on. To be fair, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's always been a big biggest issue, really. Um, I mean, like I say, another thing about Clough. I mean, I alluded to earlier, but earlier is like he's the kind of manager that would if he chooses a club, he'll be there for like you know, three or four years like he was at Burton. So I'm like, yeah. it's great to have a manager. Like, I mean, a bit like Mark Cooper in a sense at Forest Green. He's, he's been there a couple of seasons. He's been through the, the playoffs mm. and that. So he's, he's, it's a similar kind of if thing in a way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's one of them. It kind of, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm surprised with where we are, in, if I'm being honest with you, because obviously of how we started the season, it's like, it was like, oh, great one for a long season here. And, Obviously, changing yeah. management. Uh, he's bringing up, he obviously brought a couple of players in from Burton, which obviously you know you'd expect him to do. Um, but you know, even before the January transfer window opened and before he brought anyone in, he just we still got the results with the same players that he didn't sign. So it, you know, anything can happen in this league. So you know, it's it's hard to predict. I mean, there's what 20 odd games yet to go. So yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's a really odd one to call. But I, I, I put my money on you being in the automatics. I don't see why why you wouldn't. If I'm honest. Yeah, I think we will. We'll be in the playoffs definitely, and just this this season, it just feels like the squad is more all rounded. Really, it's got that um, combination of you know experience, lots of games, mm-hmm. but you know hungry younger players as well. And something else that I think will play play a part is it's um Mark Cooper's last season on his contract. Oh, wow. so he's got that. He's got that sort of, you know, added pressure of if we don't get the playoffs, at least, will he get offered a new new deal or not? Because, you know, he's been at the club, what, four or five years now. Dale Vince has backed him significantly. We've, we've, we've signed a hell of a load of players and got rid of a hell of a load of players who I, I think, you know, have been really good. So, you know, there's not there's not too many reasons why we shouldn't be challenging, really. And... Yeah, I, I think that we we will go up this season, and yeah, I'm just, I'm just re- looking forward to to it really because we've been we've always had good teams the last few years, and last season we were up there. We, I think we were top of the league in November time, and then we just dropped off. And then the year before we were in the playoffs, lost in the semi-finals. So, hopefully this year we can get over the line really. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. Like I say, you know, obviously Mark Cooper's built on that, you know. I mean, season upon season, you've improved a, a lot. And obviously, in the minute, you know, you're doing well. And as I say, I know there's a lot of games to be played and anything can happen until now, until the end of the season, like, like for every team. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't see why not. If you, you know, if you can keep some of the top players you've got, you know, injury free as possible. Um, and just, it's just all about consistency. I know it's a bit of a cliche, but I think this is the key to this this league. Well, every league, obviously, but I mean, especially League Two, because, you know, a couple of wins and you're up there, as well as a couple of the feats, yeah. you can be down there. Um, so, you know, I still think there's a lot, a lot still to happen uh, in terms of teams dropping points. I mean, look at Carlisle, it just shows you, you know, you can go to Carlisle and you can, if you can do that at their place with how they've been this season. So there's, there's no reason why you can't, to be fair. Mm. There was one, um, something I forgot to say as well, is against uh, Cheltenham, Ebu Adams got sent off. Mm. So I believe, because it was two yellows, it's only a, it's only a one match just suspension. One, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so he should, he should be back for um, Saturday's game. Mm. Whether he'll start or not, I don't know, but Ever Adams is a real handful. And I'm surprised he's still playing at League Two, to be honest, because mm. last season especially, he was probably our, one of our best players, just a really good player. So hopefully he comes back in for Saturday and can provide you know some some energy in the midfield. Yeah, I mean, like I say, you, I mean, you've got you just got a load of quality. I mean, similar to ourselves, really. You know, both sides, you know, they both got quality, you know, just all over the pitch, really. So you know, hopefully the game will be on this weekend and it's it's going to be an interesting, you know, for both sides because obviously we're both going to see how far apart we are as well from where obviously we want to be. And I think from our point of view, it's going to be a good test to face the side that's obviously up there. Um, I mean, they always say that in football, you know, you'll know how far you need to be to obviously compete with the top sides in the league. Um, so from our point of view, it's probably going to be one of the biggest tests uh, this season. Um, obviously, since clubs come in, uh, I know we played you guys obviously before your place, but since then it's changed and you're you're a lot higher up now. Um, so it's, it's again, it just makes for an interesting game for both sides. I think really to be fair, because obviously if you obviously if you get a result against us and you know depending on how Carlisle can go, you can be even further ahead. Um, but on the flip side, you know if t- if obviously we get the result and teams, so it just can change like that so massively in this league. Yeah, I'm just uh, looking on who scored now and on the, the preview, they've actually predicted that Man- it's going to be Mansfield 2, Forest Green 1. Mm. So it should be a really exciting game. But if I was to make a score prediction, I'd say 1-0 Forest Green. You know, we'd, we'd nick a 1-0 a away win. I think it would be a massive, massive result for us. Hmm. Yeah, it would be. It would definitely. I mean, especially while we've been five wins in a row. Obviously, it's going to end at some point. Um, and yeah. what a better place to you know do it, especially our our place as well. Uh, but the, the thing that concerns me, like I said earlier on, is just the the match fitness essentially. Um, so that could, I think, that'll be a big thing for you guys. Because obviously, we'd have liked to have played uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> the other night, but obviously weather permitting, it wasn't possible. So. Um, yeah, again, it's just it's going to be interesting because obviously you want to keep that rhythm going, really. When you haven't played for what three weeks, it can really damp here because it feels like you've just not kicked a big ball all season. This, this thing is, it is so mm. yeah, it's so I, I suppose from that side of things, I think you'll have the advantage from that point of view. Um, but yeah, from our point of view, it'll also be a big test for us to see how far we are from you know, you know, the top. Well, if you had to say a score prediction, what would you go with? Uh, uh, now, there's a question. Um, um, I still think a draw. I just, I just think you know both sides will score. I just think I say I'm just going to say a one-one. If I'm honest with you, I want to say a win from my point of view, but I don't know. It's just, it's just difficult to predict. Obviously, I'm hoping I'm wrong. Hope we do win, but I'm going to say a one-one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. Thank you again for coming on, Ollie. Um, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, good luck there uh, with the rest of your podcast, and uh, yeah, hopefully you can just just thrive on it and do it more, really, mate. Same, same goes for you, mate. I've really enjoyed this this talk, and good luck on Saturday. Yeah, like I say, best luck to you for the rest of the season. I don't see why again. I don't see why you won't, you know, get promoted this season if you carry on what you're doing, um, and. I think you'll still get it, to be fair. I still think you'll probably get automatics because, you know, you've got the players, you've got the manager for it. So I don't see why you won't be. Yeah, I'm looking looking forward to the rest of the season. Yeah. 
thanks for having me. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Yeah, thank you, mate. Appreciate that and uh, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you.